In this week's episode, we explore more of the lush green countryside to be found further up the River Fowl, before setting sail once again, where Dominic would get a masterclass fishing lesson from one of his favourite YouTube channel hosts, the one and only John Locker, from The Fish Locker. But before any of that gets going, there's a small matter of the Kodera Rise and Shine ritual. Uh, is it Wakey Wakey Rise and Shine time? You know what Wakey Wakey Rise and Shine time is, don't you? All right, we're just getting ready to leave this amazing place. I'm really sad actually to go, but we have an appointment down at Pendennis Marina because we're having some birthday shenanigans and we've got some friends and family that are making a really long trip to come and see us. So we really want to try and put the boat somewhere where people can get to it really easily and come and say hi. And uh, being anchored or on a mooring buoy just makes that a bit of a pickle. And the last time we were in Falmouth, what we realized is the water taxis can be a bit hit and miss, whether you can get through to anyone. So, we have bit the bullet and booked a few days in a marina, which is good. We need to go into a marina, you know, say sort our tanks out, juice our batteries up and give the boat a good going over. She's feeling a bit feral. You ready for someone new? Good. This is a such further up the river Fowl. See, we're in Falmouth. Falmouth's okay. It's busy, a bit studenty, lots of people. But if you just take half an hour in any direction up the river, up a creek, you just I need to find new words. Staggering, breathtaking, beautiful. But they really are the words that describe accurately exactly where we are. Now to say today, haven't you? Considering you haven't got your life jacket on. Look at all these birds. Look at them, they're all having a look for some food. And no doubt they know exactly where it is too. these little birds here. I really hope the camera can pick it up. Ingr ing ingrits, I think they're called. These blackbirds here just flying across the surface. The thing that I particularly like about these birds is that they just seem so... They look just as capable, if not more capable, under the water than they do out of it, unless their wings are soaking wet, in which case they can't fly. And when the sun comes out, you'll just sort of see them with their wings just held out in the sun, facing the sun like sun worshippers, just drying off their wings before they can fly somewhere near. They're such awesome birds. I still can't get over just how out of place that gigantic piano cruiser looks in 
all this glorious nature. It's, uh, it sticks out like a bit of a sore thumb. How you doing? I love you, Channel. Thank you very much. <laughs> Take wind. We had no wind at all. So now it feels like we've got probably high teens. Yeah, 16, 17. All right. Hello, sir. Six knots. That's like light speed for us. That's warp eight. Pah! Oh, look at this sun is shining. The sea's calm. All the sails are up. Six knots. Woo! Tides on our side. We've got 850,000 boats to meander through. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Anything you'd like to say to your loyal fan base? Anything at all? <laughs> Any words of wisdom in your four and a half years on this planet? There you go. <laughs> Le less is more, is that, the, is, that, is that the angle you're going for? Yeah. Good, good chat. After a short sail, we readied Kadoa to be docked up for the next few days. Don't know what to do with ourselves. This feels like five star luxury. We haven't been in a marina since we left Southampton. As in, we've been into a marina to like do stuff, we haven't been in tied up and like stayed the night or a few nights. This is like being in a hotel now, isn't it? Right, I need to go get to the office to go pick up the goods. Okay, good morning guys. Today, today's a super special day. I'm just about to go out and enjoy my birthday present. So Carly and her family have uh, organized for me to go fishing with somebody who I follow online, who I've been absolutely captivated with for the last few months now, trying to improve my own fishing skills. This man's called John. John has an amazing channel. If you haven't heard of it before, it's called The Fish Locker. If you're interested in anything, fishing, foraging, um, he, he, what this guy doesn't seem to know about the British coast and everything that's in the sea here is almost not worth knowing. Really, really, really clued up guy and uh, yeah somehow Carly's family have organized for me to get together and spend the day with him and he's going to try and bring me up to speed and uh, steer me in the right direction so with any luck after the day I'm going to come back 
armed to the teeth with tactics to acquire food without having to go down to the supermarket. That's the plan. So they're all spread out. Well, they'll recongregate again to a group. And the bats will have them again. But at the moment, there's no one specific place to concentrate on your casts. Right. Because the fish are all spread out. So you might still catch them in amongst them. Okay. But they aren't as concentrated as they were before. So you will find that bigger lead one. Took ten minutes. Oh, <laughs> there you go. He's back in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably still there. Just three left. It was leaving. They said it's leaving at six. Do come bigger than this. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Don't just catch small ones. Mick Brown described them best. It's like trying to hold a bar of soap with pins in it. <laughs> Any of you guys that are tuning into this that have watched for a little while now will realise that. Um, my hunter gathering has uh, provided very little in the way of sustenance. In fact, starvation is basically the only thing that's been on the menu for a while now. So, but I am having a masterclass today in in how to catch fish. So, I'm I'm going to spend less time talking to you guys and more time listening to him. Nothing personal. Another little bass. Yeah. I've phoned that a couple of times and I've come back and I'm like, oh, that brilliant session. And where's the video? Said, oh, crap, I've got. <laughs> well, I'm just enjoying myself. This is a very good sign for the future. Most oh. of the fish at the moment are just under minimum landing size. Yeah. There's a good stock coming on. Now, we have a lot of bass there, but there's a lot of small ones. It's quite a good Turns out they're going fishing with someone who knows what they're doing. That's two fish in two casts. That's not a bad size. Two seconds. I'll measure that for you. You can keep it if you want. Be close. There you go, mate. Oh, Table size bass for you there. You know how where the spikes are. Yeah. Well, if you run your hand right up inside of the gill like that, so it doesn't touch any of the gills. Yeah. That is. The easiest way of holding. It. Okay. I was always nervous about damage. So that you, as long as your fingers don't go in between these gill membranes yeah. here. All you do is you just run it inside. There's no way of doing it. Nice. Got a photo with it? No. We're coming up onto an area reef. Okay. You can see that because They've come up from a flat and it's started getting rocky. So all of those bulbous things are... are These bumps no. here, yeah. that's the rocks on the bottom, that's the reef. Okay. See where it's broken? Yeah. That's solid, is rock. Okay. Where it's a little bit broken, that'll be seaweed. Any patches that you see in the water, like this, yeah. the shoals of fish. Amazing. You don't really want to give the game away in terms of where we are, so that's the only glimpse you guys get. You can, you can hold down your search onto an area where there's a few peaks, Peaks will be where the fish will be. Okay. 30 gram, 12 centimeters. 40 gram, 14 centimeters. Okay. Just going to tie it in a little bit more. A little bit heavier. Wowzers. 
That is a better one. That is a better one. That's a beauty. Well done. Might be five, six pounds. Yeah. But he has taken that lower right down. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's one that's not going back. Oh. Now, how much I'd like to return him, he's not going back. No, that's a shame. But it's a good job. They're good eating fish. But camera doesn't like the rain, but I decided to break it out because we've got some gannets and some dolphins that are all no doubt fishing. I've done quite as much filming as I'd love to have done. Well, like I say, the camera doesn't love the uh, camera doesn't love the rain and the GoPro. Well, you all know what that is. Bottom of the sea. John has just spotted some rubbish in the sea, some plastic. You know the drill. Yeah. Is that one of those waterproof bags or something? <laughs> yeah, it's full of water. I think that just about concludes the day's fishing. That was a good day. So we've got what? Pollock, grass, bass. For those of you that don't know, I only found this out whilst we were fishing. John here has actually got the UK record for the biggest uh, bass. Bass ever caught or just land bass or is it just a... No, well, actually the, the shore record is bigger than the boat record. Wow. So yeah, the biggest bass ever caught in the UK. John holds the record and you've had the record for what, a decade? It's not been broken since. Almost. Solid. Yeah, so for anyone that wants to check his channel out, actually wants to see somebody who knows what they're doing, fishing and all that jazz, then uh, I'll pop a link in the description. It is The Fish Locker. Great channel. I know a lot of you guys have seen it already, but those of you that haven't, go check it out. And uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take our catch back to Carly. Time to feast. It's been a pleasure fishing with you. Thank you. That's been awesome. Oh, Hank wants to join us. Yeah, you can't get out that way. Get to Come on, mate. There, there we go. go. All right, now the whole team are here. <laughs> I imagine some of you are probably wondering, after all year of not being able to catch a table-sized bass, the very first one I catch, I, I go and put back in the water. Um, yes, yes, I did, but I just want to take a moment to say why, and that is because I was fishing with John. And John is a master fisherman, and his view on catching bass personally is that if he catches a bass, he releases it. And again, he takes the view that bass have been under an immense amount of fishing pressure over the years, and he doesn't need to add to that when there are a huge amount of more sustainable fish that can be eaten, such as ling or pollock and a whole host of other fish. So my view in that moment was, I was there under John's tutelage. I probably only had that bass on the end of the line because I was with John. And so just kind of in that moment, it felt like the right thing to do is to respect his philosophy uh, on fishing and bass. And I was really just there to learn from the man. So I, I, I let the bass go. But um, that's not to say that in the future, when fishing on my own and catching a bass by myself, uh, if it is legally the table size that I wouldn't keep it. But in that instance, that's what I did. Hope that makes sense. Well, to me it does. <laughs> Um, I want to say a huge thank you to those who have donated through our run button, uh, which you'll find on our homepage on our website. Um, but those people who have donated, um, that money will be going towards our water maker because, as you know, that is what we are desperately trying to save for at the moment. So a big thank you to Brian McNabb, Christine Shea, and a very big thank you because it was a very, very generous uh, donation that you made. Is Stephen Rance? Yeah, that so. was crazy. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. That's yeah beyond generous and just know that when we are drinking clean water uh, from freshly made seawater from freshly made seawater <laughs> when we're drinking freshly made water from freshish seawater thank you you would have yeah I know mate spit it out is what I mean spit it out uh, thank you thank you yes yes you're thanking them too or you're having a go at me for rambling on um, and I was always you know a massive 
huge thank you to everyone who supports these video making efforts uh, over on our Patreon page. Uh, we've had four new patrons as well since the last video, and uh, they are. They are Tim and Barb, and Ian Knuckles. And a massive thanks to Pat and Verity Griffiths. Griffiths? Griffiths. Verity Griffiths, I think it's Verity Griffiths. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much as well. Uh, thanks to you, we can replace the camera equipment that I lose. And, and as our patronage grows, um, hopefully maybe at one point in the future, we can really dedicate much more time to getting more videos out at a higher quality more frequently. So that would be amazing. It would. Okay, right, we're off. Hope you enjoyed the video and, uh, and bye for now. Traveling for free. Yeah, just I don't want. Look, I realise that most of you watching this uh, know more about sailing than we do anyway, so this is not lost on you. But as the channel grows, we may attract the viewership of some people who watch it and think, yeah, it looks like something I'd like to do. Travel around the world for free, or at least travel along the south coast of the UK for free. Um, there's nothing free about it. It's the most expensive way to travel for free, somebody once coined it to me, and they're not wrong. They're not wrong. <laughs> but if you don't care about money, in fact, better yet, if you hate money, buy a sailing boat, go explore. <laughs>